be so strong And I look for My precious door To take me Away once Welcome to Changes. I am your host, Emmanuel Coleman. And we are going to be doing the most wonderful program today because we're going to be talking about bread. And before we go into it in any great depth at this point, I just want to say we will be discussing some potential health issues. And if you have any question about them, please take advantage of your own health practitioner and do not regard this as an advisement of how you should live your life. I'd like to welcome to the program Bezion. Hey, my well. Lovely to have you here. I've known you for many years at the different farmers markets, and right. uh, we had a great opportunity. Came in and uh, filmed you working and showing everybody how they make bread or how you make bread, and and we'll, we'll get to see that later on in some footage. And uh, I hope everybody doesn't mind if we eat <laughs> while while we talk. <laughs> you brought some beautiful <laughs> breads here for us. Um, Nothing else is bread. Well, let's get you into your controversy. Well, Why is that? First of all, is there any food that's good for us that we can eat and say we can keep eating this and survive on this planet? There's no such thing. Uh huh. Only three civilizations have thrived eating properly. Which are? Um, Incas in Peru with corn and lime. Uh huh. Chinese with soybeans and seaweed. Okay. And in the Middle East, flour and bread, hmm. sourdough. So Flour and water makes sourdough that you cannot undo. Okay. So people thought of bread as being staff of life because they felt good. Mm -hmm. And today, it's not the same bread anymore. Uh -huh. It's troubled. How the so? best you can get by somebody else making bread will be something of this nature, uh -huh. which is mixed and baked same day. All right. Well, these are aged. These can only come by aging the dough in the refrigerator. Why would one want to age dough? I mean, that, that seems like a, a slow way to get a, a loaf of bread if you're, in a hung if you're hungry. The protein in grains are not easy to digest. Uh -huh. They are protein. If you think of animals like elephants have the longest intestines, mm -hmm. they eat nothing but plants. Okay. And they need long intestines. Uh -huh. A lion would eat meat, and it's mostly protein. Mm -hmm. They store that protein for days. They don't have to eat every day like we do. Uh -huh. uh, they produce ketones, acetone, and they smell. Okay, because that's why protein fermentation. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not a pleasant one. Yeah. Well, when you go to the, the lions in the zoo, <laughs> that's it's usually kind of an offensive procedure. Right. Yeah. Uh, so it's not easy to digest protein. That's why animal eating cannibals, I'm not cannibals, sorry. <laughs> meat eating uh, animals, Animal. uh -huh. um, they don't have to eat every day, and it takes a long time to break up the protein. Another example would be uh, soy sauce. Okay. It takes over six months to make soy sauce. To make miso, it takes over three years to make a miso, mm -hmm. meaning more amino acids than more peptides or proteins. And we, we need those in our body when we eat this food? Or? A lot of us don't understand a lot of things because we're not educated right. Okay. Uh, when we're told to eat protein, you cannot digest protein. Mm -hmm. You need time. Right. So the only thing that digests it is your intestine. Uh -huh. And they have to be amino acids for your body to digest. And how do we get the amino acids into the body? Um, First, it's the job of your stomach to give acidity. Uh -huh. Then it's the job of your intestine to give alkalinity. And in the process, as it's going from one to the other, you have salts made. Okay. So you're having almost everything you need except alcohol. And what is that Like called? one of the proteins that turn into gluten is mm -hmm. called prolamin. It's very high in rice. Uh -huh. 
Um, in the past, people have learned to eat rice by fermenting it a long time, which means sporulating yeast in the rice, coming and breaking it up mm -hmm. in the heat. And you're talking about the yeast is, is a bacterial form? Uh, uh, any uh, plant yeah. has yeast, usually on the surface of it, uh -huh. has lactobacillus from the roots to the leaves. So I thought lactobacillus was only from uh, milk product. That's because cows eat, eat the grass. Okay. <laughs> and the grass gives them different levels of lactobacillus of different sorts during uh -huh. the day as they eat. It's never the same in the morning, noon, and night. Hmm. It varies. All right. So I'll, I'll, watch, I'll watch what they're eating and see if I can hone in on that. Right. So, so w you're saying that the, the plant form gives that lactobacillus to us when we eat? Uh, I look at it slightly differently. All right. There's no beginning or end of life without lactobacillus. That's sure. why they're called lactic acid bacteria, acid producing. They're the friendly ones. Uh -huh. They're of three kinds. One of them used in yogurt that doesn't give carbon dioxide. That's why your yogurts are not bubbly. Hmm. The other two produce acids and carbon dioxide, and that's what we rely on raising a loaf. Let, let's, let's cut to it. I mean, there, there are different kinds of bread, and you're saying that if the bread is, is produced slowly, it has a different uh, fabrication to it than the bread that is made quickly. Right. And why, yeah. why would somebody make something quickly other than to bring it to market money. sooner? Money. Okay. Speed. All right. More water, more production, money again. And it would, it, would you say it is a lighter piece of food than the, the, the longer processed food, or is that, that don't they compare that way? In the past, this protein level in the breakup of the wheat, whole wheat, was very low, and they didn't rely on that protein. Mm -hmm. They relied on the protein that was in the sourdough culture. Well, you, you, you pointed to these. Let, let's go through okay. what they are. This is whole wheat that we have ground. We haven't removed anything out of it. All right. This has wheat germ, 3%, 12% bran. You remove these two, you end up with white flour, which is 85% of the whole wheat. Some people think whole wheat has no white flour. There's no such thing. Uh -huh. You cannot make bread with these two. Without those two. This white flour has more protein in it than a whole wheat does because we remove this in the white flour. I see. This is what we buy from supermarket, white flour. So it's protein rich. Has 13% protein today in America, uh -huh. under 12 in Europe. Okay. And the first time it was introduced was very low. It's like using cake flour and trying to make bread with it. You can't make bread. Hmm. You can only make flat breads like lavage. Uh -huh. And that's why biblical times they said we broke bread. Because it was a flat piece of right. bread. Ah, very interesting. Today, we pull bread. We don't break it. <laughs> because this it. is very high. Uh -huh. And that is the main reason why a lot of diseases are linked to, to that protein. Well, let's just do the last one, too. And that's a starch, which also has protein in it. All right. The way we have to understand this is yeah. very simple. Just add water to this whole wheat or the white flour. Yeah. And make it into a lump of dough. Yeah. Then hose it off. OK. These two and the starch uh -huh. will go away. You're left with the gluten-forming protein. All right. When you grind that, it's sold at five times the amount of white flour. Some people use that in other foods mm -hmm. to give it body. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't have acids or alcohol, major diseases. Well, I, I, I'm getting confused. Why don't we go through and say which is and, and, and forgive me for making it so simplified, which is good for us and which is not good for us. No good it is for good for you. No, no food no is food. good. Right. Okay, well, you, you pass that step. We have to know the, what are the bad things, eliminate them. All right. So which, which, of, which parts of this would you suggest that we avoid eating as much as we tend to do? Okay. Wheat germ is full of vitamin E, very nutritious. Yes. But it gets rancid. That's why when you grind whole wheat flour, uh -huh. because this is high in wheat germ, yeah. You don't want to save it too long. It uh -huh. becomes rancid tasting. All right. Vitamin E. All right. I was reading an article. If you eat enough green vegetables mm -hmm. and um, plant vegetables, it's good enough, enough vitamin E that you can get. All right. Uh, it's 
not nice to keep picking on this, but that this is the best what thing you should uh, have. What about the... This is another thing that a lot of us don't understand. Yes. This is the brand, 12%, very big in volume. By uh -huh. weight, it's Which only 12%. We're supposed to eat so it cleanses our intestines, no? Myself, I would not eat something because it's a fiber. Uh -huh. There are two types of fiber, like oat fiber is soluble, mm -hmm. wheat fiber, fiber is not soluble in water. Uh -huh. uh, oat is supposed to lower cholesterol, yeah. and wheat is supposed to be anti-cancer, uh -huh. the fiber. Uh, the researchers, I don't think, have been done properly, the researchers, uh, because most of the nutrients are underneath the bran, meaning magnesium, calcium as minerals. Mm -hmm. They don't talk about anti-nutrition, which is on the surface of the bran or your grains or your beans. Uh -huh. It's called phytic acid. Mm -hmm. Even Dr. Atkins keeps talking that if you uh -huh. eat bread, you should eat sourdough bread. Okay. Actually, your bread is not starch. Everybody picks on starch every time we talk about bread. People right. should be educated. There's a lot more to bread than just starch. Okay. So you have a, a point which you make with the, uh, the weak gluten. Mm -hmm. We'll maybe come back to that later on and, and look at that, because we have some footage of you uh, making bread, and I think we should get to that, and then we'll, we'll, while we're watching that, we'll raise some other issues. Mm -hmm. So, um, we see. should learn right. our enemies and know what to do with the enemy. Uh -huh. That is our enemy. Well, you do a lot of business in the farmer's markets. Right. And I uh, chose the most difficult way. One way is to sell the supermarkets, yeah. and the bread will be very expensive. That's why I didn't choose that way. Uh -huh. And you'd be buying without really knowing what you pay money for. Well, anybody who wants to can get a real education by coming and buying <laughs> bread from you. I, right. I'm amazed at what you do know. And this is a little bit of the process that we were just looking at. Um, look, we're going to see you operating with the gluten, wheat gluten. Um, you, you put some on your hand and added water. We should learn that gluten is not just in wheat. It's in all grains. Uh -huh. It is in almost all um, legumes. Okay. Because any time you have a protein, it is a storage type protein. But it doesn't dissolve in the water, it becomes... It becomes a lump uh -huh. because of tyrosine, one of the amino acids uh -huh. found in wheat. All right. The more we have tyrosine, the more of the bond. In the future, we're going to come up with new wheat that has more tyrosine in it to be able to get even more high, uh, high rise in bread. Okay, but is that going to be healthy for us to have? Not the way it's brought today. Uh -huh. Like I said, this is your enemy, you know your enemy, but if you know what to do with it to dissolve it, then it's not your enemy anymore, then it's 13% good food for you. So what does, what does the gluten do when it becomes that, that little ball that you had in your hand, that rolled up? Uh, where, I where sometimes listen to health channels, yeah. Saturday, Sundays, uh -huh. AM stations, and they talk about John Wayne disease, why he was sick, uh -huh. and they took the 25-foot intestine of his uh -huh. and found over five pounds of garbage, which is gluten mostly. Wow. It is a gummy substance. So it doesn't move through the body uh, efficiently, is, is your, what you're saying. Your intestinal villi. These are, just, just to come back to this, is the, the sourdough culture. culture. And you're adding that also. And I, I realize we're going back and forth. But, uh, you weigh it? Uh, I didn't understand why. Uh, well. Everything is estimation. If your temperature is going to be the same as today, tomorrow, uh -huh. then you work with what you've done earlier. So this is a measure. Right. When you weigh. So if it's very cold tomorrow, mm -hmm. we need to add more culture uh -huh. to speed it up. But um, the way we do is we don't mix and bake. We refrigerate. And when we get it out, it takes 18 hours for the bread to rise. We've estimated that if we take it out at a certain time, it should be ready at a certain time, so when I come to bake, it's ready. So you calculate all of your right. preparations. But when you speed it up, you don't get any of those blisters, the benefits, the uglier, the chewier. Uh, we'll <laughs> see that at the end of the tape, the, the difference in uh, how the bread looks. And you, you're adding all kinds of things there. We've got salt, and this looks like malt. Right, and malt is not necessary. It just helps um, speed up 
um, or give it a little better rise in the bread. Is that a sweetener? Or I mean, are we talking malt uh, barley? Again, uh, most of us don't understand these, these terms that are given to us. Yeah. Uh, one of the most complex sugars is fructooligosaccharide, uh -huh. which is found in uh, Jerusalem artichoke or sunchokes. Okay. You can't just eat that. It's called FOS. Right. Yeah. Uh, you can't just eat that. Uh -huh. It'll give you so much disturbance in, in gas volume uh -huh. uh, that you should eat in moderation. Um, instead of one lump, you should eat more often, uh -huh. smaller amounts. All right. What you're doing is you're feeding your microflora in you. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I always say um, if your intestines are plugged or you're not functioning your intestine and you feed yourself through other means, yeah. you're, you're going to be obese most of the time mm -hmm. because you've picked up sugars, simpler sugars, through your stomach, your esophagus, your tongue, or whatever. Yeah. But if you're not getting nutrition at all, it means you're, you're plugged up in your intestine. Okay. And I'm just going to come back to this. You were adding, you were sifting through the uh, chopped olives that you were adding to the bread and right. making sure there aren't any more pits in there for people That's to... That's a difficult process. So. Yeah, it's a, it's a hand uh, process which right. you're having to do. Everything is almost... Uh, Totally hand work, you know, right. we saw. And uh, now you're taking out the mixed dough. And the water you used, you, you took it out of a big bottle. Is that yeah. filtered water? Okay. Yeah. You're filtering your own water? Right. What happens is a lot of us, we think that we, we drink filtered water, we're mm -hmm. doing okay. Uh -huh. Actually, you're not getting the calcium and magnesium you're supposed to get from the water. And the water that you have can get moldy fast that you don't see, which is again toxic. Uh -huh. Some people keep using the same container, filtered water. Eventually, it's going to taste bad, and they complain that your filter is no good, whatever. Actually, their container is no good. Uh -huh. It needs to be washed. So you, you're, you're weighing lumps of the bread so that you have an exact measure, and then you put it in this um, Divider, hydraulic hydro pressure right. device, which I thought was intriguing because I couldn't understand why you would, pre you would squeeze the bread <laughs> until you opened it up, and then we s I, I saw what was going on. Otherwise, you're going to have to scale them one by one. It's That's very right. Time and uh, this is a fascinating uh, device for making an exact measure. And uh, we didn't, we don't see it on the tape, but uh, it came out at one and a quarter pounds per loaf on the dot. Right. Neither more nor less. And we lose about 25% of it while being baked, so we end up with one pound usually over. Okay, so you take a qu one and a quarter pounds to make a pound of right. bread. Right. Well, it's, it's of course, that's our formulation. Yes. Uh, we use very little water. Others use a lot of water to increase the volume, weight, uh -huh. and money. Now, also talk about why you were, you were pinching the bread and, and turning it so that there was a, a round okay. side. But uh, anytime you're using this kind of gluten-forming protein, yeah. you want to mix it long enough so that you form the gluten. Uh -huh. When you overdo it, you, you break the gluten again when you're uh -huh. mixing. This is not a muffin that you can squeeze the dough and put it in a pan and keep baking it. Uh -huh. uh, you got to keep tucking the dough underneath, keep pulling it. Uh -huh. And there's no machine made today that, that will do, do that. That's why I'm not inclined to sell the supermarkets yet. And now you, you, you're storing that made that bread in the uh, refrigerator. That's right. And then this is some that you've taken out of the refrigerator, what about it? No, the day before? This is 18 hours. 18 since it hours was later. removed from the refrigerator because oh. it was cold. Uh -huh. It takes far longer time for the bread to rise to room temperature and be ready. So why would we slow down the process that way? These blisters mean the age, meaning the protein uh -huh. that's in the flour is being broken up, not the protein in the sourdough culture. You always have that, the uh -huh. protein in sourdough culture. Different proteins. When you look at lactobacillus, mm -hmm. it's microscopic. You can't even see with a microscope sometimes. Okay. You need electron microscope. Uh -huh. They're like a rod. Okay. They have protein and they have minerals. Minerals meaning magnesium and calcium of the right kind, yeah. which means you can absorb the calcium that's in the lactobacillus, mm -hmm. but the one you get in water may not be the right magnesium for you to pick up the right calcium. Okay. Uh, this probably is a good source also to get magnesium and the calcium. Wheat brand, yeah. Right. It may be um, closely tied, but nothing like sourdough protein. Uh -huh. So you identify the loaves also by uh, the way you cut into them. Now what you, you were telling me that you cut them to, to break up air bubbles? 
Uh, you wouldn't, anytime you're using white flour, yeah. and it's a bigger loaf, yeah. it tends to balloon someplace. Uh -huh. So you gotta score it so you don't get the blister, the, the balloon blister, the big, big okay. blister. I see. So uh, for olive, olive was one of the four breads that we originally started with. Mm -hmm. I wanted to designate it like it with an O. We started with the Kalamata <laughs> olive, O for olive, then it starts getting better and better, <laughs> and high rise, and uh -huh. most of the time people go for uh, this looks great. How do you do this stuff? Uh, yeah, yeah it's, it's just wonderful shapes that you're. And then with. it started with a B, like in basil. Uh huh. A B, uh, yeah. and we've changed it uh -huh. into a funny face since then. Kids love that. And <laughs> yeah, tea, like in the tomato, like tom tea. Now we're seeing you pulling the bread out of the baker, out yeah. of the oven now. Right. And uh, this is where you're demonstrating there's, there's a difference in, the, in texture right. on the exterior. The difference. The one on, the, on your right there is, is smooth and the one on, on the other side is very puffy. And mm -hmm. you've got a theory on thyrosine and there's the formulation for... It's a blessing we have wheat, yet it's caused so much trouble for us that most people don't understand. No, really? It's the tyrosine that makes the bond from one protein to the other. Uh -huh. The more we have, the more bond we'll do. No other grain will do that for you. That's why we haven't had any bread made with corn, rice, uh -huh. soy, whatever. You cannot make sourdough with the others. Mm -hmm. uh, you will see fermentation going on, but you cannot have it in billions like you can in bread. Uh -huh. Well, we're seeing some of the varieties that you make. and You, you have these available every time at the market. I, we I tried mean, to. You, you are working <laughs> round the clock. I, I, I think you must sleep on the drive over to the market or something, the amount of work that's involved. <laughs> Hopefully not. Yeah. It's funny, sometimes um, a lot of my customers understand what goes on, uh -huh. and they come and tell me, um, which is your ugliest bread today? And I know what <laughs> they're asking. <laughs> and then you've got, you've got a bunch of little statements up there to keep that's people right. on their toes. I want people to learn that your bread is not just starch. There's so much nutrition in sourdough that people forget. Most researchers are done. Uh -huh. on bread not being sourdough. This is the best they can go to if they do sourdough without uh -huh. addition of any other yeast or whatever, uh, okay. baking soda, baking powder. This uh -huh. is a lot better. Now you've got a statement about four proteins and all grains. Right. And uh, let me just go back to this point. Mm -hmm. This is uh, in Alexandria in right. Egypt. Mm -hmm. And you were there. I luckily stumbled across that site uh -huh. and my family wanted to see the whole thing and I wanted to stay there and I thought this was a lot to do with what I'm doing and it turned out to be. Uh, that's when bread, I presume, was found um, uh -huh. or brought to Egypt uh -huh. because original wheat had only three seeds. Mm -hmm. They could not plant it. They had to plant one out of three and okay. end up with two more if they're lucky. Why well, plant it? Uh -huh. So that this is the evolution of, of the making of bread. It's about um, 95 years, 50 years before Christ is when a wheat husk was introduced to the uh -huh. world. Even Great. though we keep hearing that Romans and Greeks have been doing bread, my assumption is if they did bread, it was either barley, uh -huh. rye. I don't think millet. Millet was used in Ethiopia. They still do. It's mm -hmm. called injera, flat uh -huh. like muffins, extremely sour. Well, I'm going to suggest that rather than do that now, you and I encourage people to come and talk to you at the farmer's markets and uh, get one of your famous uh, educational uh, discourses. <laughs> yes, you do. You do it brilliantly. Um, so let's just look at the, the, the bread that you brought here because I think people can better understand a little bit more how you've scored. This is the, the olive bread. With mm -hmm. the, uh, with the, the olive cut. Yeah. And uh, what about the, the, the tomato the with three pieces? Oh, also okay. the T. <laughs> the small ones we cut them into T shape earlier. All right, and then this one. Uh, T A tarragon. So we know the difference between spearmint feta and tarragon parmesan cheese. Otherwise, when we package, we could make a mistake. I hope everyone is realizing how <laughs> exotic these breads are because they're phenomenal to eat. I absolutely love going and buying this bread. And this was the the, the funny face that became the B. Right, B for basil. All right. The important thing is when you eat something, no matter what it is, yes. and later on you're digesting well, mm -hmm. it means you've done okay. Well, you, this is an interesting point because you said people have come to you and said they've been warned off bread, right. and yet when they eat your bread, they find themselves feeling much healthier. I feel the same way. I never have problems with bread. Uh -huh. 
uh, knowing what I'm doing, I would not, I try not to eat somebody else's bread. All right. Okay. And if I do... Because it isn't bread. I notice a difference. What happened yeah. to me? How come I feel bloated? I feel funny. Uh -huh. You don't have that feeling without bread. Okay. And that's what we're looking for. That, right. That's the consciousness sign right. that things are not right. Meaning, uh, this is what's causing the problem. The weak gluten. Protein. L let's think that death is not the only gluten-forming one. Mm -hmm. uh, there are two in the starch. Uh -huh. Albumin, globulin. Okay. Albumin sounds like egg. Also in eggs. Yeah. Uh, I'm not a doctor, so I, I wonder sometimes how come we have albumin levels in our blood, mm -hmm. or should we have it all? Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, your intestine is the one that absorbs the amino acids. Yeah. So it's going to your blood uh -huh. as individual amino acids. All How right. is it being formed back into <laughs> albumin? Uh huh. It's amazing how our bodies are made. Well, you told me something really incredible that one time that uh, the whole process of the body is to actually m is to is is like a uh, alchemy that it generates different um, processes and, and we end up with proteins. Uh, life is fermentation. There's no beginning or end of it. Right. Whether it's a carbohydrate, protein, or fat, uh -huh. the simplest carbohydrate uh, fermentations give you acids. Yeah. Protein fermentations give you um, what is it? Yeah, uric acid, urea, uh -huh. stones, in uh -huh. which means if you keep eating nothing but protein for a long time, you can end up having stones in your uh -huh. bladder. Because your body's not acclimatizing to it. Yeah. Uh, too much of amino acids, mm -hmm. too much fermentation, faster fermentation. Uh, the other one is the fat, fatty acids. Uh -huh. Your intestines don't absorb anything but those individual simple ones. Okay. And your body gives enzymes, hormones, whatnot, besides your acidity in your stomach. Well, I'm going to encourage the audience to uh, find you at a farmer's market uh, yes. because uh, they can learn more. Jack Bridgen, thank you so much for bringing your bread to us and uh, the education that you've given us. You're welcome. Really appreciate it. And to the audience, um, you, you can't do worse. You can do a whole lot better by eating the right foods, and uh, we really recommend this to you. Um, Thank you very much for permitting me to bring you this show of changes, and I look forward to seeing you at another time. We wish you all in good health. Thank you. Thank you. Love strong. Wait and wait for so long. Until we're all used up, baby. And then we'll wake up. through your heart and after this long way we're blown apart